Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve problems where you need to calculate the distance between a seismograph station and an earthquake from the difference in time of a P and an S wave. Now that's a mouthful, that's a big intro, but basically there are two different types of waves that head off from an earthquake, and let's say we know the difference in the times in which those waves traveled and hit a seismograph station. And from that, we want to calculate the distance involved between the earthquake and the seismograph station. Now, this lesson is appropriate for a physics or an AP physics or even a geology class as well. And so let's go ahead and get to it. The problem says we have a seismograph station and we have our P wave and an S wave. Both of them have their velocities. We have the difference in time between the seismograph station getting the P wave and the S wave. And so let's just start. Let's start with a couple things. Notice that this is going to start with 2.2 minutes. So we're going to say difference in time between P and S equals 2.2 minutes, but actually more helpful than that since everything else is in kilometers per seconds, for instance, we can go ahead and convert that into seconds. And if we do the math here, it turns out that that is 132 seconds. Next, what we're going to do is think about our basic velocity or speed, average velocity or average speed equation. So let's go ahead and write that out. And so notice that they are the same equations with different subscripts. I do want you to think about subscripts. They're there as a label for ourselves, not for anything else. And so it helps us to think about what we're talking about. I do want to point out that notice that this delta x, we could say delta x for p, is actually going to be the same as the delta x for s. And that we will just call delta x. So let's go ahead and just get rid of this subscript, this little label here, because if we start looking at this, we have a lot of unknowns. We have multiple equations to work with. So one of the strategies we're going to use is we want to reduce the amount of unknowns that we're working with. If we put check marks by what we know, then we know these two things. We don't know this delta x. We don't know this delta x. We don't know the delta time. We don't know the delta time. So lots of unknowns. But if we call these variables delta x instead of delta xp, delta xs, then that reduces the amount of unknowns that we have. Now, another strategy that we can use here is since these are the same in both equations, we can set these two equations equal to each other. So let me show you how to go about doing that. All right, and notice that you can set these equal to each other. So I'm going to be left with this equation here. And I'm going to go about labeling this as equation one. Again, let's think about what we know and what we don't know. I'll put check marks for the things we do know. And notice that we still have two unknowns, so we still have too many unknowns. But remember that there is more information that we haven't yet incorporated into this problem. We do know that the difference in time for the two waves is 132 seconds. So let's write that as an equation. And in fact, I'm going to give you two options and ask you to decide which version you think makes more sense. So I can say delta t for p plus 132 seconds is equal to delta t for s. Or we can say delta t for s plus 132 seconds is equal to delta t for p. And so which, I guess I'll label these as option A and as option B. Which do you think makes more sense, option A or option B? Remember, the p wave is faster the S wave is slower. So what do you think is going to make more sense? Well, option A is going to make more sense. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of label this as equation two over here. What we can do with that is we can take equation two and sub it into equation one like that and see what pops out. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and now we're getting somewhere. And we're getting somewhere specifically, I'm going to move this. We're getting somewhere specifically because now, if we think about what do we know and what do we don't know, this is an unknown here, and this is an unknown here, but the good news is that we only have one unknown, and so we can solve for one unknown. So all we're going to do is distribute and isolate for our unknown. So let me show you that. And because our delta TP is our only unknown, I'm going to work to isolate now and get that unknown by itself. And now we can factor out the delta TP. Let me drag the screen up so we can see what's going on. We're now ready to input numbers. Notice I'm inputting numbers 
at the end of the equation here just so that we can avoid mathematical problems and confusion. So let's put in our values. And if you do the math here, you end up with the time for the P wave from starting earthquake location to travel all the way over of about 169 or 168 seconds. Okay, we're going to use that info. So let's go ahead and take that 168 or 169 and think about what we can do with that. One of our original equations up here we can use. And so I'm going to go ahead and use over here and drag this down. So we're just going to write our basic average velocity equation here. And again, we're trying to solve for this. So we'd say And rounding off the two sig figs, we end up with 1.3 times 10 to the third kilometers. So if you want more information about P and S waves, I've got a link. I'll put it in the upper right right about now to help you understand more about that. And if you want to learn any more physics, I've done basically an entire year of physics. If you're curious, if you have any comments or questions down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.